So it is time now for the last installment of our walk cycle uh, demonstration. And in this, we are going to add a little bit of overlapping action and do just a little bit of cleanup on the cycle. So um, first thing I'm gonna start out with is by just adding a new layer, right? So we're gonna do another pass. Remember if we've got um, layers for the rough animation and then I added extra layers for the arms just to keep things organized and to make sure that if I made any mistakes, it was easy to go back and fix them. So overlapping action, if you recall, is one of those principles of animation and it has to do with um, things that are attached to the main action and are sort of dragging behind. So things like, um, you know, hair, coats, jewelry, clothing, tails, um, things like flags also can be overlapping action. And so the thing to think about with overlapping action is where is that point of attachment? Because that is going to be the driving force of the movement. Um, so I'm going to add a little stem to Perry's head because he is a pear. And what I want to do to start off is find the low point. And it's just going to go right here in the center of its head. Now, this is going to be sort of a floppy pear stem. And so what's going to happen is as Perry steps down in his body, kind of moves to that low point and then moves to the high point, then the, the top of the stem is going to kind of flop back and forth. So I need to add a few more frames, turn on my onion skinning. So I'm going to do a combination of straight ahead animation and pose to pose, a little bit of pose to pose, because I do need to get back to the beginning, right? And so there's certain parts that I need to hit. But um, overlapping action can tend to be easier when you do it straight ahead because you can sort of uh, feel your way through it. So for example, um, if I'm looking between these two frames here, right? So Perry's head is starting to move upwards. Um, and then we have kind of like this big upward movement, right? The point where it's attached is moving in this direction. However, the end of the pear stem here has momentum moving in this direction. And so what's going to happen is as the bottom of the stem is moving in this direction, the top of the stem, because it has its own little bit of weight, is going to continue moving in this direction. We're going to get this sort of nice little curve happening. So on the next frame, let's see how this goes. So the stem is there, but there's still a little bit of um, this part here is dragging behind, right? And now, because this has been quite a big movement to get his head up here, we're going to have um, the curve is going to start to break. Now, if we want this really floppy, and I'm just going to make it really floppy, like it's sort of like a loose bit of head just for the sake of demonstration. Um, so now we have um, this sort of S curve shape, right? So the curve shape is sort of like that. Whereas in the previous frame, we had this C curve shape. All right, so this is called breaking the curve. So at, at when the curve transitions from that C curve, um, it's backward C, to an S curve, we are transitioning to the opposite type of curve. So at this point, right, the, the bottom attachment point is still moving in this direction. Um, but now the top is probably dragging a little bit behind here. And one thing is I do really need to be careful about um, the volume and the length of this stem. So what I might do is I might go ahead and turn on my guide layer and just make a little template um, guide so that I make sure I don't as I'm going straight ahead, start making this stem super, super long or have it get shorter. So I'm going to move that just over here to the side so I can always refer to it. Okay, so far so good. So let's get back to our animation where we're going straight ahead. So what we're looking for is we're looking for the high point, right? And, and that's the point where the head is um, the highest. And then that's when the curve is going to reverse again. So 
So here's our high point here. So we got one more frame to get there. Okay, so now the attachment point, right, has reached its highest point on its arc and it is um, dropping again, right? So that dropping movement is going to pull it down, but this part, this top part here of the head is going to continue moving upwards. Should probably zoom in a little bit. And then as we have this kind of big drop going into the contact pose, that is going to straighten that out. Now, this is where I want to kind of use my template, make sure that um, as it's dropping, I don't have it get too long. I could add a little bit of stretch to it just to make it a little more bouncy. And we're still drawing. And so now we are going to get another one of those broken um, curves where we have go from a C curve right to an S curve. And as this point of attachment moves forward, we get a little bit more of that momentum bringing it down. And then we're going to get back to that C shape. So you can see we went from um, on this frame here, we went from this C shape here to an S, starting to be an S curve, right? And then back to the C curve on this one here, right? So um, overlapping action is really, uh, that is the key to overlapping action is getting those C curves transitioning to the S curves and back to the C curves and back to the S curves, especially if you have a cycle, right? So we have one um, kind of step here and now we need to get Perry back to that original position. So we're back to the low pose just with the other leg forward. And um, I'm just gonna go through this process again and turn on my onion skinning here and uh, make sure that I hit this point of attachment, right? Make sure that that's in there. Um, but I'm gonna try and give the pear stem just a little bit of kind of rotation in perspective. Um, so when I kind of do this, I'm gonna just like, draw it in a way where we kind of see the edge of the stem and we get a little bit of foreshortening. And so now we're breaking that curve again. And this one's tricky because um, there's, this is moving kind of in this direction here, right? So, but then it's got to kind of whip around quite a bit. So the reason that working straight ahead is good for overlapping action is because you can actually see the curve that the thing trailing is following. And so it helps you figure out the position and how to shape the next curve when you can just refer to the previous curve. Trying to do that with um, in-betweening is actually really hard. It's much easier to just sort of adjust your curves as you're going straight through. But of course, you do need to get back to the beginning and so um, that becomes a little bit tricky. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my first frame of the body position and I'm gonna duplicate that. And I'm gonna put that um, at the end of my sequence. And then, so this is the first frame of the um, the walking sequence with the body position and the arms, right? Um, but we are, and then, so, so I have it placed kind of over here at the end just to give me a reference. Since I started here, three frames in, I need to get back there, right? Um, and 
so doing it over here at the end, I can still use my onion skinning and kind of like look at where the position of that stem is as it's breaking the curve. See, now we're in the S curve, right? Um, and now I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna put it kind of right here. And move that and move this sequence back to where it belongs because it got shifted over one, right? So here we are. And then here's this one. And so now I have two in-betweens that I need to do between um, these frames, right? To just get back there. And so now I'm actually going to in-between so that I can make sure that I hit that mark. So let's get a couple frames in there. Two empty frames, just my onion skinning. I think that should do it, right? Yeah, okay. So um, since there's two frames, I'm just gonna do kind of a third, a third on the in-betweens. And this one is, let's see, which one is the there? There's the one behind. And so one third of the distance would be that. Oops, we're getting a little bit misaligned with the top of his head there. And then one third of this distance is there. Okay, so that makes that easy getting back to the beginning, right? Um, so I was able to do most of this straight ahead. And then I just did the last part with um, pose to pose animation. So now let's see what we've got. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, it's got this nice little floppiness. It's not perfectly repeating itself. There's a little bit of dimensionality to it. Um, I could probably do a slightly better job on the, the length of it. It looks like it shrinks in a couple of these frames. Um, maybe I'll go back and fix that. Which ones are those? That one needs to be a little bit longer, probably. Maybe this one just needs a little bit of pushing out. And this, um, you know, will also kind of, when we do the cleanup, we will tie all this stuff down. Okay, so there's Perry with his stem and he's got his arms. And now um, we're gonna do a cleanup pass and it'll be ready to go. When you're ready, when you're satisfied that everything is looking really nice, uh, you've kind of got all the motion ready, then it's time to put one final layer on and to do your final line work and from there, you can, if you wanted to add color, you could add color. Um, but it, it, the main point is that it is important to work in these layers so that if you do make a mistake on one layer, then you aren't committed to your final line work and you haven't spent all the time doing all of the details of your animation. So um, doing rough passes where you kind of like get the legs working, you get the body working, then do another one for the hand, the hands and the arms, then you do another one for overlapping action, um, will in the long run save you a lot of time. So I'm going to create a new um, line work layer. And um, at this point, um, I feel pretty good. I've kind of gone through and tidied things up quite a bit already and as far as the mass is concerned. But what I'm looking for is I'm looking for like little issues, little pops. Um, I see actually some stuff happening in the top of the head here um, where in some of these frames, his head gets a little bit skinnier than in others. And so those are things that I kind of want to watch out for as I'm doing cleanup. Um, we just want to kind of pull everything together and keep it super on model. So this is where it's helpful to have um, a guide underneath that you can use as a reference. So in Photoshop, when I'm doing cleanup, um, I put the smoothing on and that just helps the line not be quite so shaky, but it does um, change how you draw. So just be aware of that, but that's kind of like a good little feature that you can make use of. And on my guide layer, I'm just trying to figure out, okay, well, where exactly is the knee? 
because I want to always be able to measure the length of the legs, measure the length of the foot. This is basically just to keep everything consistent. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to reduce the opacity of my rough animation layer and then I will work on the final animation. Okay, here we go. Sometimes in the cleanup process, onion skinning can help, and sometimes it's just a distraction that um, where you can't really tell, you know, which lines you should be following. So I usually just sort of flip it on and flip it off depending on um, whether I feel like I need it for certain parts. And so having the template over here also can give me the option of using it to help keep the size consistent and then sort of tracing from it. In the cleanup phase, it's really important to constantly be flipping back and forth between your drawings to make sure that you're staying consistent because that's sort of what this is. So like I can see already that the foot has lost a lot of volume in the process and so I need to go back and fix that. So cleanup is really a process of choosing which of those sketchy lines you um, are, are preferring, right? Um, and because our eyes naturally look for the movement. And so when we do the cleanup bit, we really wanna be kind of checking all the time to make sure that the frames are connecting in a logical way. Okay, so this is gonna take a while, um, so I won't make you watch it. But I think you get the idea and have fun making your walk cycles.